We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you in the room, there are sandwich boxes over here and some drinks, so please get your lunch. Um, but I just want to say how honored and thrilled I am that we have Dr. Zhang Lemin, who is here, um, or Lemin Zhang, as they say in Vietnam. Um, so uh, uh, he is a wonderful a colleague, investigator, who works very closely with a number of us here at CHIPS. Um, so uh, uh, we, we thought we were taking advantage of the fact that he's traveling right now and happened to be in the neighborhood. So we said, since you're in the neighborhood, you know, how about coming in and doing a, a talk with us? And, and we'd be happy to see you and the um, opportunities to have social and academic connections with him while he's here. Um, in introducing Dr. Zhang, it is really, he's got an incredible uh, portfolio. One of the things that's very important to recognize is Dr. Zhang is funded by NIH, uh, which is remarkable because his career is in Hanoi. There's just a handful of people in the world who have careers that are, that are um, funded by NIH at the highest levels of science who are not living in America. So it's, it's really a mark of distinction. Uh, Dr. Zhang is the chair of the Department of Global Health um, and active head, acting head of the Office of Science and Technology at Hanoi Medical University in Vietnam. He's an adjunct faculty at the Department of uh, Sociomedical Sciences at the Mailman School of Public Health at Columbia University. His research focuses on untangling and reducing consequences of intersections of substance misuse, poor sexual health, and HIV, AIDS, and STDs. And of course, that's why it's such a great fit to have Zhang here. I will say that in the last few years, I have learned more from Dr. Zhang than I think he has learned from me. So it's, it, it is good to see, and, I, and you can see in my portfolio how things I've learned from Vietnam actually find their way to be done here in Los Angeles. So um, it is great to have him here. Um, Dr. Zhang works with investigators at Columbia, University of North Carolina, and UCLA. And I must say he has an impressive group of investigators that he's been cultivating over the years at Hanoi Medical University. So um, it's, it's great to have you here. He's been funded by PEPFAR and SAMHSA and led the Vietnam, ATT, Vietnam HIV ATTC, which is the Addiction Transfer Technology Center. Um, and of course knows many of our colleagues here in, 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 the, in the US and has been visiting with us in, in uh, CPDD and met some of the colleagues there. So I'm really honored and thrilled to have you here, Zhang. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing your talk today on collaborative research and education on global health between Hanoi Medical University and the University of California in Los Angeles. And I just want to say, for those of you who are not already working with Zhang, Dr. Zhang, you need to do that. So, so like, let's connect. That's why we're here today, is to make connections and to build collaborations, because he, it, he makes things happen. And it's really good to be working internationally in your portfolios. So I would, I would highly encourage uh, conversations with Dr. Zhang. Dr. Zhang. Uh, thank you, Professor Sotor, for a very kind um, uh, introduction. Actually, I, uh, as you see that from my presentation, I actually learned from Steve and many colleagues here more than, I, more than they learned from me. So, um, and also that I, uh, I, I think that I need to uh, update the uh, biography that I provided to uh, uh, Steve uh, probably a few years back, even before COVID. And, uh, now I'm actually with the depart uh, chair of the Department of Epidemiology, and uh, Professor uh, Details may be happy that I continue um, this uh, the chairship uh, from Dr. Hien, uh, Professor Hien, who, who was uh, Professor Details students. Um, and I, I uh, overall I'm uh, very happy to be back um, here, and uh, I feel like I'm back in uh, a family, uh, uh, not only the uh, Familiar neighborhood that <laughs> uh, happened uh, to be wonderful, and but also with many of the colleagues and friends and 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 the people that I'm very happy to uh, to work with over 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 the years. Uh, so thank you. Um, 
So last year, I, um, uh, my presentation was, was more uh, described uh, the research that, that we conducted. Uh, but this year, I decided that I uh, would focus more on, um, uh, on, on uh, our collaboration because I feel that this is a very uh, important time uh, to um, think about uh, the future. And, and I think that that's the would be my uh, key message uh, for today. And uh, uh, and I would love to uh, hear your uh, feedback uh, and your suggestion um, on how we can continue to develop our collaboration uh, in the future. So uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, this is a disclosure. Um, I uh, received the material support from Abbott and, and Roche, but they are not uh, related to uh, this topic of presentation. I'm currently supported by uh, this uh, research grant and many of uh, which are uh, with faculty from, from UCLA. Uh, but I think the biggest uh, acknowledgement and, and <clears throat> really uh, heartfelt um, uh, gratitude uh, going to um, many of the uh, people in Vietnam and, and especially UCLA who have uh, contributed uh, over the years um, uh, for our collaboration. <clears throat> we have many uh, people who uh, I know here, but also uh, online as well. So thank you, thank you. Uh, I will, um, in my talk, I will uh, this first describe uh, a, a little history of our collaboration. Uh, that have now spent, I think, uh, more than two decades, um, <clears throat> and then uh, describe the uh, two uh, calls to uh, I would uh, the uh, groups at my research center, uh, then what we are doing research now, and what could be the potential topics for uh, our collaboration, uh, and then I describe a little bit about the uh, uh, collaborative education between HMU and UCLA now which I hope will um, grow even stronger in the next few years with the new uh, curriculum uh, for medical students at UCLA. And then uh, I will provide some uh, brief thoughts about uh, the, next, the next steps. So let's uh, talk about the... Um... So uh, this is the first part about the history. Uh, so we can see that uh, there's a lot of uh, familiar faces on, on the screen here, uh, starting with the uh, uh, our visit uh, with the, our pre president at the U my uh, university uh, that was in uh, 2012. Um, uh, we organized a visit to um, at the medical school here. I'm meeting with the who was there at that time was in the dean, I, I believe. Um, and then uh, we at, uh, in 2017 uh, when we start a new uh, project, uh, Fogarty project, in which Professor Lili and Professor Details. And uh, here's the uh, launching of the uh, first uh, summer uh, workshop that we had in Hanoi in 2017 uh, for the Fogarty training. And you see, uh, you could say, see that uh, Professor Hien was the speaker and we have uh, Lili and uh, uh, Steve and Chun Chin was at the at meeting. Uh, so briefly, the uh, Hanoi Medical University is the, the oldest university in Vietnam uh, with the French colonial history uh, in uh, 1902. Uh, currently, we have uh, 2,300, uh, 2,300, about 2,300 uh, faculty and staff, uh, including staff working in, in our hospital. Uh, I, I know that it's very small compared to UCLA, but um, uh, our university is, is the health science university. It's unlike UCLA, is a sort of more multidisciplinary and, and broader um, uh, uh, sciences. But our focus is on health sciences, including medicine, nursing, dentistry, uh, and, and, and traditional medicine, and, and uh, preventive medicine and public health. Uh, so the total student is the uh, top uh, 12,000, uh, about uh, currently about 12,000, and half of them undergraded and half of them graduate uh, students. Um, of course, as a university, we have um, a research uh, as an, uh, one of the very strong pillars, including uh, biomedical clinical research and public health. Um, in uh, for we have, as I mentioned, that we have uh, about Half of our students are postgraduate, 
uh, we were one of the biggest uh, postgraduate uh, training uh, program in, in Vietnam. And, and, and um, we have our own hospital uh, that about 10 years old, it's still very young. Uh, but most of our staff are working in many uh, specialized hospitals in Hanoi uh, as a uh, director or chair of different uh, departments in, in those hospitals. Uh, and here's the uh, my center uh, uh, where most of the current collaboration with CLAs are, are going on at this center. Uh, it was founded in 1994 uh, when uh, as a, our first response to HIV epidemic in Vietnam. And currently, we are providing the training for both uh, medical students, uh, uh, residency residents, and also for health workers who are already working in, in the field in Vietnam. Uh, we focus our training and research on SUD, uh, HIV, STI, and, and comorbidities. And we also have a, a clinic, which I described in a few minutes, uh, that provide a PrEP, uh, STI, and psychosocial intervention uh, for uh, MSM and transgender women you know, who are using SUD. Uh, so that's the uh, our our center. Uh, um, this is the, the building of, of, University of the uh, clinical service of the outpatient clinic, and our center is on the second floor, uh, the, the whole the whole second floor of the of the building. Um, so let's uh, history. Uh, I think the um, really to talk about the history of uh, collaboration, we need to uh, uh, honor and mention uh, Professor Dittles and, uh, and uh, in Vietnam, Professor Nguyen Chen Hien. Um, and uh, Professor Hien was a, uh, 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 a very early on a, a visiting scholar in one of the, in the faculty training program. And then uh, we also, uh, had another uh, 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 prof Dr. Wilson Bing Ming, who was trained as a, a master student in epidemiology, and she's now the um, uh, faculty member in my department, in Department of Epidemiology. So she came back from UCLA and then uh, went on to study at UNC and now back in, in our department. Uh, one of the very famous projects that uh, Professor Dittles and Professor Hien uh, started in uh, early. Uh, in early 2000 was the community intervention project to prevent, uh, and I have to emphasize to prevent drug use. Uh, now we are focusing on on uh, treatment, on uh, on the work on uh, treatment, mm -hmm. but uh, with the vision, uh, their vision, uh, Professor Dittles and Professor Hien already talked about and actually implemented a project to prevent uh, people, uh, young people, uh, to use drug and to prevent the uh, from use to injection. I think that was very, uh, very, and then this is the publication in the American Journal of Public Health. And then uh, another very important uh, foundation was the um, uh, Professor Rick Rosen uh, at the ISF, and then after that was the Dr. Sherry Larkins. Uh, we were very fortunate to uh, be supported by FEFA and Sansa. Uh, to uh, at that time, Vietnam was starting to implement uh, the methadone uh, expansion, pro expensive methadone in, in Vietnam. And our uh, university and, and uh, the center was selected by FEFA to uh, uh, provide the training for all uh, MMT workforce in, in the country. So uh, they invited uh, FEFA and Sansa identify. ISAP uh, and Professor uh, Rick Rodson in particular to, to, to support, to provide a technical, technical support for our team. And we would do um, uh, training to develop the workforce. We pilot uh, different projects to, uh, uh, on, on uh, intervention. And, and also we organize a lot of conference to professionalize, professionalize the addiction workforce, uh, starting to professionalize the addiction workforce in, in Vietnam. Um, <clears throat> and then the, um, uh, the con uh, uh, collaboration continue uh, now when the uh, D43 project, um, uh, uh, Dr. P.I.'s, uh, Dr. Dittles, that was the P.I. ended, we, the, uh, Dr. Dittles and, and uh, uh, Professor Lily continue to develop the next uh, D43 project, uh, focusing solely on 
uh, developing capacity for HMU. And uh, I, I was uh, fortunate to um, uh, work with Dr. Uh, Lily to, to was co PI uh, on that project. And, and um, so the project uh, helped us to train uh, two PhDs uh, in epidemiology here at UCLA, uh, Dr. Ziep uh, on the left hand side and Dr. Lok uh, on the right hand side. And both of them now uh, also in the uh, faculty of Department of Epidem uh, Epidemiology in our university. And really, they uh, uh, bring a lot of the uh, excellent uh, training from UCLA and now uh, helping to train our uh, students at our university and also doing a lot of, of, of important work in, in, the, uh, in the university. Uh, we are uh, also um, very successful in training uh, master students in uh, visiting scholars, but especially the uh, five summer institute on uh, research methodology for for faculty um, uh, faculty fellows uh, and but also mid uh, career researchers in 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 Vietnam. Um, so that's the uh, a brief history of the past um, twenty years. Collaboration and now about the future. Um, so uh, let me describe first the um, uh, the two expertise calls at our center and how we can build on that uh, for our future collaboration. Um, so uh, here's the um, uh, on the top uh, right hand side we saw the um, uh, launching uh, uh, meeting of uh, the uh, R01 uh, study that I collaborate with Professor Shoptal. Uh, to implement in Vietnam. And the launching was in 2020. At that time, uh, we just had start uh, the COVID epidemic. So the, all the UCLA team was on Zoom. <laughs> and, and that was a very um, uh, uh, memorable uh, meeting. Uh, but then also we had the um, uh, visit, uh, earlier visit in, uh, from Professor Klaus, who was still at that time still with UCLA. And uh, on the right hand side is the uh, last year uh, poster presentation at the ID Week uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, that's the, uh, 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 Dr. Paul Adamson, one of our researchers. Uh, so the first call uh, is the sexual health promotion call, and it was established uh, at the center in 2013 uh, in order to promote the research and services for sexual health uh, for MSM and transgender women in, in Vietnam. And uh, we have a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that we have a clinic, uh, which is now the uh, biggest uh, prep service provider in Hanoi. We have about uh, 2,000 active uh, clients uh, that are receiving prep and uh, SDI uh, screening and treatment. Uh, in addition to that, we also provide the uh, HIV screening and referral to treatment uh, because we are in the uh, a clinic at the Hanoi Military University Hospital. So we have access to many other services that we can refer our clients to those services, including HIV treatment, including uh, mental health, including the uh, STI treatment and screening, but also uh, other services. So we are trying to uh, build our clinic as a one-stop shop model uh, for uh, one-stop shop, uh, one, uh, stop, uh, one, uh, stop shop clinic. Uh, for MSM and transgender gender, uh, women in Hanoi. And here's the uh, key personnel. Uh, the, the, in, in, in the SV3 call, we have a clinical service. Uh, we have, but, but the, the main uh, group uh, working um, also is the, res the research uh, call. And here we have two, uh, two uh, current uh, key personnel. One is Dr. Hao Bui, uh, who's uh, received her. Uh, uh, master of uh, Public Health training at HMU, and then went on to do the PhD training in the uh, University of New South Wales in, in Australia. And uh, Dr. Lok uh, Phan, uh, again, is a, one of the product of the faculty training program here at HMU. Um, Dr. Uh, ha Bui focused uh, a lot on SDI and HIV epidemiology, and also in implementation of uh, evidence-based intervention uh, to prevent STI and HIV. And Dr. Lok uh, is uh, very, uh, currently doing a research um, on gender-based violence and sexual uh, violence among MSM. 
especially among uh, those receiving PrEP, uh, in order to see whether the violence have any influence or impacts on the PrEP adherence and, and persistence. Uh, and he was also very um, uh, good in, uh, uh, in trying to develop the expertise in data science and epidemiological methods. He is very active in that. Uh, this is the a few ongoing project. Uh, we since the 2022 we started um, collaboration with the Professor Klausner, who's now with the USC, and uh, was looking at the um, uh, prevalence of uh, 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 chlamydia and, and gonorrhea infection among um, MSM who are receiving prep in in in, in our clinic. Uh, but also uh, to look at the antimicrobial resistance of uh, gonorrhea uh, and among this among these these people, um, and then building on that uh, project, a small R twenty one project. Recently, uh, Dr. Paul Adamson got a, a Kay Wood, um, and he's is now mentored by uh, Professor Klausner and Professor uh, Pamina Gorbach here at uh, UCLA, and also uh, with two mentors at, in, in Vietnam. One is myself, and the other is a, a microbiologist, um, Dr. Chung Nguyen. Uh, uh, Dr. Adamson uh, research project uh, is, is more on, on uh, focusing even deeper in the uh, Neisseria gonorrhea uh, antimicrobial resistance, but he's also very uh, working very actively on developing uh, intervention to uh, provide treatment and and prevention of, of this infection among uh, MSM receiving PrEP in, in Vietnam. Uh, this is the few uh, publication we uh, very have been quite uh, successful in uh, putting together a publication in uh, a journal like Clinical Infectious Diseases, uh, Lancet microbiology and uh, currently working on a, a couple of a few more uh, manuscript in, in preparation and a lot of uh, conference uh, presentation uh, including uh, recent uh, uh, soon in July in the World Congress on SDI in Chicago and also a, a regional conference in um, uh, Asia Pacific AIDS and co-infection conference in, in, in Singapore. Um, so I think that the team there is very, very uh, productive and very active in, in um, uh, making the best out of the data and uh, uh, going on for, for the next project. Uh, so here's some of the uh, potential uh, research uh, topics that, that I think is, is uh, that we can win further on the, the work that, that our team is doing for this, the sexual health promotion. Uh, one is the understanding and monitoring the, the risk of uh, gonorrhea and Neisseria and, um, and Neisseria commensal uh, uh, for antimicrobial resistance among MSM using PrEP. As you know, that this is a, a major threat to now uh, in terms of the, uh, as MSM uh, switching uh, fields, I mean, using PrEP, uh, they are, um, there's a lot of talk about risk comp compensation uh, like uh, removing the uh, safe, behave safe behaviors and, and therefore the SDI among uh, PrEP using MSM are rising. So this is one of the major uh, challenges for the PrEP program. Uh, we also uh, actively working with Professor Pamina Gorbach on uh, the possibility to uh, an implementation science for evidence-based intervention, uh, especially to provide doxycycline for SDI prevention uh, in, in, in among MSM. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Dr. Lok in our team is working on issue of sexual violence and gender-based gender violence among MSM receiving PrEP and uh, receiving IRV. And I think this is a very uh, important challenge uh, for Vietnam, uh, but also the world because uh, the stigma, because of the discrimination, which translate into uh, uh, interpersonal uh, violence uh, in, in this uh, population. Um, and uh, last but not least is that we are very interested in the technology-based intervention uh, to improve uh, PrEP adherence uh, among MSM and PrEP persistence among MSM. Uh, now, because um, 
uh, in Vietnam, we still uh, uh, providing uh, with the main uh, still providing oral uh, prep, but soon uh, we'll uh, move to injectable prep. Uh, but I think the, the technology uh, support, technology based support for adherence for other uh, concern, including STI prevention, is, some, is something that we, we would like to uh, develop further uh, research uh, on. Uh, so that's the uh, sexual health promotion call. So now let me move to the next call uh, of our team, which is the uh, uh, substance use uh, disorder call. Um, and here we have uh, two um, uh, key personnel. One is Dr. Uh, Chang Nguyen, who's a, a clinical psychologist. Uh, and then she uh, interestingly went on to got a PhD in uh, uh, political science in in, in in you can imagine that in in France not 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 least mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she's a uh, wonderful uh, researcher especially in uh, qualitative uh, methodology um, and uh, she's focusing a lot on uh, community based uh, psychosocial intervention for people who use drug and she's a very uh, she's a pro prolific um, um, researcher. She's now uh, first author of uh, 16 uh, English in uh, uh, articles in, in peer review journals. She's very, very uh, pro prolific, uh, productive. And then we have a uh, UCLA uh, HMU product, um, Dr. Ziep Nguyen, who trained as a general practitioner in Vietnam, but uh, then got a PhD in epidemiology at UCLA. And her current research topic, she's uh, working with Professor Jun Chin on stigma among women living with HIV. Uh, but uh, she's particularly interested in the uh, uh, delivery models to reduce substance use and, and improve uh, treatment effectiveness among SUD uh, population. And uh, uh, they also, in addition to uh, research, they're also running the uh, our new version of VH, VHATCC. Uh, now it's our VHTTC uh, has been uh, transformed into Vietnam uh, International Technology Transfer Center with the same uh, focus on, on building the addiction workforce in Vietnam. But we are now funded by the, U the US the, uh, Department of State. And, and this is a, 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 new, a, new, a new program that, that the Department of State is supporting uh, globally. Um, as uh, some of the ongoing project, um, I want, uh, of course, the, uh, I'm very thankful to um, uh, Professor Lili, Professor Sokto, and, and um, uh, our uh, keepers now in at UCLA for supporting our this project. And uh, this is a um, project focusing on the optimal and cost-effective combination of evidence-based intervention uh, that are adaptive to individuals who are on methadone and yet at the same time using a methamphetamine. Uh, and uh, currently we have just completed our recruitment uh, at the end of May, uh, which uh, 667 uh, participants in, 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 in our study. Uh, so far we have, we are now uh, uh, starting the year four and we have published uh, three papers um, in, in a journal like the International Journal of Drug Policy and in some other uh, respected journal. And also a lot of, uh, every year we contribute to um, either oral or poster presentation at NIDA uh, International Meeting or CBDD. Uh, so I'm very proud of the, the team in Vietnam and UCLA for uh, very productive uh, early in the, in the study. Uh, the next, uh, building on the um, uh, STAR OM study, uh, recently uh, Dr. Huyen Phan, who is uh, doing postdoc under Dr. Ying Sir and Dr. Larissa Mooney, uh, just got a new um, uh, UCLA Global Health uh, seat grant for uh, doing a study on psychiatric uh, comorbidity and recovery outcome among the participants of the R1 study. And um, they have just completed the IRB approval at HMU and in UCLA. So they will start the data collection uh, very soon. And I think this, um, this is a wonderful opportunity for um, 
uh, strengthen further the, the building on what we have done with the style M study and maybe looking at the mental health uh, intervention, mental health issue uh, among uh, people who are on methadone uh, using meth uh, and, and so on. And uh, I just also want to mention that the, uh, this is an interesting uh, pair of mentees. Uh, in the program, Dr. Huyen Pham is from UCLA, is doing postdoc here. And Dr. Ziep Nguyen is also a product of UCLA uh, that are, they are collaborating together. And uh, Dr. Huyen Pham actually was uh, my staff uh, uh, early, um, before she went on to do her PhD at uh, VCU. And, and now she's moving to UCLA doing post up I think the, the world is very small. Um, and then uh, we have a, another very uh, important and a very exciting project uh, that um, collaboration between uh, Dr. Chun Chin uh, Lin uh, and our team on the uh, 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 stigma among women living with HIV. And this is a, uh, a study funded by Fogarty International Center to uh, understand the stigma, uh, but also to pilot test a hybrid model of online and online support for the women. And uh, we are uh, completing the uh, intervention uh, very soon and already thinking about the, the next step, um, building on uh, the result that we have. But I also have to mention that this project is, is actually uh, built on the work uh, initiated by Professor Lili in China. So we learn a lot from from uh, her project in, in China and, and now uh, building further for, for Vietnam. Um, so some potential research topic uh, for collaboration. Uh, one is the, uh, now uh, the um, Vietnam has started to allow methadone take home, um, especially after the COVID epidemic and the methadone take home will soon expand to, uh, to, 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 to uh, the whole country. The question, so the question is how can we support the staff, but also the patient the family in remote and, and rural settings uh, so that they can uh, uh, stay on the methadone uh, take home requirements and, and continue with the methadone take home uh, that bring a lot of benefit to their lives. Uh, so we are, um, I'm working with Dr. Chun Chin Lin to develop a community-based telehealth model uh, that we just we just submitted a, a, a uh, resubmit a, 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 um, a grant our one uh, application uh, to NIDA to, to develop this model. Um, we would like to continue to develop the uh, uh, evidence, uh, intervention to reduce stigma uh, among women living with HIV, especially who have a history of uh, substance use, uh, but all who have husband who had history of substance use, and then the woman got infected from the husband. So this is the group that, um, that I think that we would like to um, develop uh, intervention on uh, to improve their access to healthcare services, especially uh, re reproductive health services. They, they are uh, okay in terms of receiving ART services, but we don't just want to stop there. We want to expand uh, their services to, uh, to other healthcare area. But uh, stigma is, is, is one of the main barriers, as you know. Uh, we are very uh, interested in the um, um, introducing new medication to treat SUD in Vietnam. Uh, currently, we only have methadone. Uh, we don't have yet uh, buprenorphine, injectable buprenorphine. And with the new uh, stimulant use disorder epidemic, we need really, really need medication uh, for that. Um, we, um, in Vietnam, we have about 100,000 uh, people who are now uh, in drug, uh, close setting uh, drug rehabilitation center uh, as long, uh, and they could be there as long as two years. Uh, but once they are released from those centers, the connection between them and the services in the community are very, very weak. Uh, so we'd like to develop the uh, models how to link people who are released from these centers to services. Uh, so that they can uh, to prevent the relapse, but also to improve the health and, and their, their quality of life. And uh, last but not least is the, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the um, the global seed hand uh, uh, seed program. I uh, mean uh, that that grant that Dr. Huyen Pham and Dr. Ziep Nguyen received 
we would like to build on that to develop the integrated mental health services for uh, people with uh, substance use disorders. So these are the uh, some of the topics that that you'd like to uh, to to develop further uh, collaboration with the UCLA faculty. Uh, so let me uh, switch now to uh, the topic of uh, collaborative education. Um, so in addition to uh, uh, research, we really, really need to develop education and I see uh, them sort of going uh, hand in hand. And you see, you can see that the collaborative uh, education actually happened a lot over dinners and, and not just in the uh, classroom setting, but also uh, over dinners as well. Um, here's the, uh, uh, when in 2017, when uh, uh, the, uh, Professor Lili and uh, Shoptao and Chun Chin uh, visited us in, in Hanoi. And uh, here now, it was, it, that was in, uh, uh, I think, uh, 2019, uh, when I visited UCLA and we invited all of the, um, uh, both the Vietnamese students here, but also the uh, American student uh, coming to uh, who was in Vietnam uh, for the uh, dinner, and uh, this is most recent last year in uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, where I um, uh, met with Professor again Mr. Klausner, but uh, Dr. Kau, uh, Professor Klausner, and also three of our uh, trainees and mentees. And here's the Dr. Um, uh, Paul Adamson uh, giving a lecture at our medical university for residents in in the first infectious disease. Um, so we've been also quite um, successful in, in um, uh, uh, doing the uh, global uh, research education, global health research education, uh, starting with um, a, a Vietnamese American um, uh, named Huan Dong. Uh, he uh, was the UCLA Ho Kao Fellow uh, in 2016 and 2017. He spent one year at uh, our uh, clinic and doing research, uh, starting the interest in, in the resistance, antimicrobial resistance at that time. And uh, now I think that uh, he had just, he just completed his, um, uh, you know, he's, he's doing his fellowship uh, in uh, uh, pediatric ID and been very, very interested in returning uh, to Vietnam and continuing the collaboration. Uh, then we also uh, hosted uh, Keenan Wheaters, another Glocal Fellow in 2019-2020. Uh, he uh, uh, actually uh, was mentored by Dr. Shoptow and myself and Dr. Klausner. He's uh, a medical student, doesn't speak Vietnamese, but uh, doing uh, qualitative research <laughs> on um, factors that impact uh, PrEP adherence and retention among uh, Vietnamese MSM, so uh, with who have a history of, of, of drug use, so you can imagine how uh, challenging it was for him. But we, he, he was very successful, and I, he's now uh, completing his residency in psychiatry and uh, seen working on uh, on our publication. Uh, and then this is a, a, a great news for us. Um, after receiving uh, uh, American students coming to Vietnam, uh, this year we sending um, our staff uh, to UCLA. And uh, doc, uh, Dr. Ha Bui um, just got her global uh, fellowship this year, and she will be uh, working with Professor Pamina Gopak and myself and uh, Professor Klausner on trying to start some small step into the, into the to the introduce uh, 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 doxycycline prep uh, for to prevent STI uh, among MSM uh, in Vietnam. So we are very excited about the prospect of, of um, continuing the collaboration uh, between UCLA and HMU. And uh, I also uh, want to emphasize that we we have two uh, HMU UCLA product who completed their PhD here uh, in epidemiology, and they really, really need support for their postdoc training. Uh, Dr. Zip Nguyen is in, uh, very interested in developing the capacity for clinical trial, uh, especially the uh, uh, for people with stimulant use disorders. So I hope that she will be able, we are trying to push her to apply for different uh, funding with the mentors from UCLA. 
Uh, and Dr. Uh, Lokfa as well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that he's very uh, keen to develop for the um, on uh, epidemiological and statistical uh, methods uh, in data science, in observational epidemiology, uh, in digital health. And uh, he also, uh, his uh, topic of interest is on gender-based and sexual violence uh, among MSM and, and uh, transgender women. Um, and starting um, last year, we um, are very happy to host uh, UCLA medical students uh, in, in the Global Health Equity Track. I hope that I, I uh, correctly named the, the, the track. Right? Uh, it, we used to host uh, medical students for shorter term, like two weeks or three weeks or two months during summer. But starting um, last year, we uh, because of the change in the medical curriculum, curriculum at UCLA, we're happy to host the uh, student uh, Ursula and Jackie uh, for their foundation three weeks. But now Ursula has decided to work with us on a longer time uh, in, in uh, five months, uh, starting this November. And she, he will be mentored by, uh, she will be mentored by uh, Dr. Paul Adamson and Dr. Ha Bui on a, um, a point of testing for syphilis in, in our HIV uh, PrEP program. Uh, so that's a, a very interesting uh, project. Uh, and we'll, this year we will um, host, uh, uh, hopefully to host uh, Ms. Uh, Lin Nguyen, um, also coming um, to, to do the foundation uh, period and exploring the opportunity to um, uh, conduct the five-month research next year in, in our university. Um, so, uh, sorry for going on for quite some time. And in conclusion, I think that the um, research and educational partnership between our two universities have expanded uh, extensively. Uh, as I described, uh, uh, starting with the Professor Details, Professor Rick Rosson, uh, uh, in, in the past two decades. And really, we have had many uh, success, uh, successful stories and successful uh, individuals. And uh, I think this is a true partnership between the uh, uh, two academic institutions, but most importantly, uh, uh, it's, it's the uh, partnership among individuals who uh, uh, like to work with each other and to uh, dedicate themselves uh, <laughs> to the uh, uh, most vulnerable population in Vietnam and in the US and, and beyond. Um, I think that uh, some of the uh, global health uh, researcher and, and uh, 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 educators have uh, sort of summarized the, uh, what make the successful uh, collaboration. And uh, they mentioned like uh, mutual respect and benefit, uh, trust, good communication, and clear uh, partner roles and expectation. Right? And I think that we can all agree with, with this um, all factors. Uh, but I think that uh, most of the analysis focus on like one project at a time, right? So for example, like the, pro the project, uh, two collaboration in one, one project, right? Uh, but I want to add another factor that in order to sustain uh, that collaboration, the Global Health Partnership, uh, we really need a, a, a very uh, sound plan for succession. Uh, I don't know if you, any of you have watched the uh, television uh, series Succession. <laughs> and and um, uh, we could see that the, the Roy family has a lot of problems <laughs> because they didn't plan well the succession. Uh, so I think really to uh, build the partnership and to sustain the partnership, I think we need to always have a, a good a South plan for succession. And I think that uh, Professor Details and Professor Lee and uh, Professor Hien, uh, to, uh, Professor uh, Rick Rosson already sort of foresaw that. Uh, uh, and, I, I, and I think that that's something we, uh, we want to continue. So um, uh, it is really the time now to develop the uh, next generation, uh, especially those who were already trained at both HMU and UCLA uh, so that they can sustain and develop further uh, what we have uh, got, uh, uh, done so far. Thank you.